want to thank Google for supporting PBS Digital Studios. Hey, I'm Callie Moore. We're here at the Museum of the Rockies in Bozeman, Montana to interview an amazing paleontologist. Ha! <sighs> I recently traveled to Hoth, I mean, uh, Bozeman, Montana, to meet with some of my colleagues in paleontology. And my first visit was to the Paleohistology Lab at the Museum of the Rockies. There, Dr. Ellen Therese Lamb explores ancient life by studying it at the cellular level. I met with her to talk about how she does this and what she's learned by putting dinosaur bones under a microscope. So let's just jump right in. What is histology and what is paleohistology? Histology is the study of the microscopic structure of biological tissues okay. and in paleohistology we study the microscopic structure of fossil remains. Paleohistology is essentially used as a tool within paleontology to answer deeper questions about dinosaurs and other ancient life on earth. We can answer questions about dinosaur growth, about dinosaur behavior, about the individual um, health of the animal. Mm -hmm. We can look at a whole growth series, an ontogenetic series, and get an idea of the physiology going on with that animal group and how fast they grew. Something like a line of rested growth, counting those can let us know um, the chronological age of the animal. Um, what? So you could tell how old some of these animals were when they died? Yes. Oh my gosh. That's yes. crazy. What's, so, the, what's the oldest oh, individual? The oldest individual. Well, um, I would say probably 30 plus would That's be a, maybe for one of the large sauropod dinosaurs. Wow. Yes. And then um, with other fossilized remains, such as ossified tendons, we can understand dinosaur posture better and biomechanics. So ossified tendons um, fossilize nicely and mm -hmm. they're found along the spine of a dinosaur. And now we understand dinosaurs are not dragging their tails around, that they're holding them erect. Which seems obvious mm -hmm. because there's no tail drag marks in between <laughs> dinosaur footprints. There we go, very good. So your whole process starts with a thin section, mm -hmm. correct? Um, what, what, is, what is a thin a section? Thin section. <laughs> to produce a thin section slide, we take a fossil bone, mm -hmm. we'll embed a small portion of it in resin, mm -hmm. and then we'll cut very thin wafers. Those wafers are mounted onto glass slides mm -hmm ground even thinner until it's thin enough um, for light to transmit through and for us to see the structure underneath the microscope. So a thin section slide ends up being about a hundred micron thin slice of fossil bone that's been stabilized and secured onto a glass slide. One project Dr. Lamb is working on is a study of how Tyrannosaurus rex grew throughout its lifetime. To get the closest possible look at the Tyrant King, she's prepared the tibia, or lower leg bone, of a T-Rex found in western Montana to put under a microscope. So, right here is um, Tyrannosaurus rex. Yeah. This is part of a T-Rex growth study. Um, after our first cut is made on the saw, so we'll take it to the saw, we'll expose the bone inside, and then this enables us to cut a thin wafer of bone and have oh, it be wow. stabilized on the open end and then exposed here. And then we will mount that onto a glass slide. And then I spend many hours at the lapidary grinder, generally listening to books on tape, <laughs> <laughs> till we get that 100 micron thin wafer of bone. so pretty. Yes, oh my it goodness. is. It's beautiful here and it's exquisite under the microscope. Oh yeah. The science and the art are all blended together That's once so cool. we're there. What do you look for in a bone to be a good candidate for thin sectioning. When we produce thin section slides, we are choosing specimens based on a question that we're asking okay. or a hypothesis that we're testing. Mm -hmm. And the bone, uh, the next bone on the chopping block is going to maybe fill in a piece of the puzzle. So you might have something missing in an ontogenetic series. So a really good candidate for that project is if you could find an animal at that, that stage, stage of growth to add in. Generally what we see in hard tissue histology and paleohistology is the work that the cells did while they were alive. So we know how a bone grows. Mm -hmm. We know we, we begin with calcified cartilage that'll form into primary bone and then mature into secondary bone and then eventually develop into something called dense aversion bone. So each of those stages of growth have different kinds of tissue that are evident. So this one here is a Tyrannosaurus rex metatarsal bone. So that's in, so the, in foot. the foot. What we see here is the beginning of dense aversion bone. And these circular structures are called osteons, 
And so you've got to think in 3D. This is a transverse section through the bone. So these are actually long columns of bone mm -hmm. with a vascular canal mm -hmm. surrounded by concentric rings of bone. And then the small little dots that you see, those are osteocyte lacunae. So each one of those held one bone cell. Okay. And it's really a brilliant design. It's the way that the body gets into our skeleton and uses the mineral matrix to drive physiology, maybe heal another injury. So the amount of erosion and redeposition can uh -huh. also let us know about the health of the animal or how far it is into its maturity. So all of that's, that's in there. That's <laughs> and crazy. More. That's crazy and that that's there's just so bone. much stuff in bone. <laughs> yes. One of the most striking discoveries that Lamb has made occurred when she studied the remains of baby Myasaura, duck-billed dinosaurs that lived in Montana more than 70 million years ago. Her research on the animal's growth ended up changing much of what we thought about dinosaur behavior. So when I first arrived, we were completing the Myasaura growth series. Mm -hmm. And what was found was in the nesting locality that the very young nestling Myasaur had um, incompletely formed ends of their long bones. Mm -hmm. So what we're seeing here preserved is calcified cartilage. Oh, wow. And the orange band in the middle, that's a little spicule of primary bone just beginning to form. So along the edges, you can see how bone actually uses what was left behind by the calcified cartilage as scaffolding to build the primary bone on. So this really provided great evidence for the idea of parental care being required for the, these animals. They couldn't hatch out and run around run and around. gather their own food. Yeah. So hence Maya, the good mother lizard, was born. and. Um, Dinosaurs really shifted in what we saw them as far as taking care of their young, mm -hmm. traveling in large family groups. So that was right to behavior of the young as well as the adults and made the whole area make more sense because in that nesting ground outside Shoto, Montana, yeah. there are all ages of mm -hmm. Myasaura together grouped. Yeah ages and stages all the way up from embryonic bone through hatchling, nestlings, juveniles, subadults, adults, all the way up. Are there any resources for people that want to check this stuff out in a little closer detail? A website or something? Excellent, excellent. Yes, we have a lab website and we've got a Google map up with about 60 different projects that we've done around the world. So you'll click on the pin and it'll tell you what we cut in Mongolia and what researcher and institution we were working with. Very cool. So we've sectioned material from all seven continents and everywhere around the world. That's so amazing. You can see who a lot of our collaborators are as well. And then a link to our book, um, Bone Histology of Fossil Tetrapods. And that is an excellent resource that will cover. I was flipping from the through very it, man. That's a really nice. neat book. It, nice. it belongs on my bookshelf, excellent. I think. Excellent. I will sign a copy for you. <laughs> Thanks so much for having us here today. You're very welcome. Um, this has been amazing, mind boggling, awesome. Nice. Um, but yes, awesome. thanks so much. Thank you for coming. It was great to have this discussion with you. Thanks to Google for supporting PBS Digital Studios. With their mobile app, Science Journal, you can take notes and measure scientific phenomena such as light, sound, and motion. You can find activity ideas and additional information on their website at g.co slash science journal app. Thanks for joining me on this tour of the Paleohistology Lab. We have more episodes from the field coming up. But in the meantime, let me know what field of paleontology interests you the most by leaving a comment below. And don't forget to go to youtube.com slash eons and subscribe.